The small town of Furstenberg lies 50 miles north of Berlin. This spa town is set in extensive woodland surrounded by three beautiful lakes. Holidaymakers have always been attracted to this peaceful resort. In the autumn of 1938, male concentration camp prisoners had been ordered to start building a woman's camp. It was sited at Ravensbrück, a neighbouring village of Furstenberg. After completion, there were 14 prisoners' barracks, two hospital barracks, and a wooden hut for the kitchen and shower block. The camp was secured by a four-metre-high brick perimeter wall topped by barbed wire and a high-voltage electric fence. The Commandant's living quarters were very spacious and adjoined by offices for himself and his SS staff. The warders and guards barracks were situated directly in front of the camp. The detention block containing 78 cells was finished at the end of 1938. This new cell block was required by the SS because of the cramped conditions at the women's detainment camp in the fortress of Schloss Lichtenberg near Torgau. Hauptsturmführer Kergel commented in a letter to the camp inspector Theodore Eich, the only way to maintain order in the camp was to introduce tough arrest facilities as to restrain these hysterical women. The first inmates from Lichtenberg prison arrived in the spring of 1939. By the 21st of May 1939, there were 974 women imprisoned in what was now Ravensbrück concentration camp. It was to become the largest and most important women's concentration camp on German soil. Well over 100,000 women consisting of over 20 nationalities were grotesquely persecuted, violated and tortured there. During the six years of the war, tens of thousands of women were executed, gassed, or died as a direct result of the inhumane conditions. The T-shaped building at Iranienburg is where the horrific so-called camp inspections were coordinated on the orders of Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer of the SS and chief of the German police force. The planning and construction of the Ravensbrück camp was based on Hitler's decision in 1935 to continue enlarging the camps within the German Reich. This was to safeguard internal security within the National Socialist State and in preparation for war. The main reasons for selecting Ravensbrück site for a mass concentration camp for women were good road and rail connections and the existing site amenities. The proposed area was visible from Furstenberg across the Schweizsee. The size of the site was another advantage with plenty of room for growth. In late 1941, a men's camp was built directly bordering on the women's camp. Female prisoners from Ravensbrück provided the majority of the heavy manual labour for the construction work. It was completed and inhabited by early 1942. The so-called new camp had 20,000 male prisoners registered up to its liberation in April 1945. A youth camp was also built close to the women's camp. This was to house girls and young women who did not conform to the social norms of the Nazi regime.
Following the outbreak of war in September 1939 and the subsequent invasion of many European countries by the German Wehrmacht, more and more foreign female prisoners were being sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp from the new occupied territories. According to the SS, the official capacity of the camp was 3,000 inmates. This number was multiplied rapidly beyond even their wildest expectations, and by February 1942, over 7,000 female prisoners were registered. The number of women brought here from Poland and the Soviet Union was particularly high, especially in terms of Soviet prisoners of war. Women prisoners also came from Germany, Hungary, France, Yugoslavia, Romania, Scandinavia, Czechoslovakia, Belgium and the Netherlands. In May 1942, two Czech exiles assassinated Reinhard Heydrich, the ruthless head of the secret police, who had just been promoted to acting German protector of Bohemia and Moravia. Two weeks later, Hitler avenged the death of Heydrich by raising the village of Ledici near Prague to the ground. 199 men and youths were executed on the spot, Almost 200 women and children were deported to Ravensbrück. Thousands of women would arrive at Ravensbrück regularly, transported by rail in cattle wagons. Around 12,000 women and children were rounded up and herded off to concentration camps in this way after the Warsaw Uprising had been brutally crushed by the Germans. Their arrival coincided with the arrival of mass transports of Hungarian Jews. This meant that a record number of over 70,000 prisoners were registered in the camp in 1944. Hundreds of these women were also mothers. In these recent importations, well over 800 children were brought to Ravensbrück. children were also born in the camp. Between September 1944 and April 1945 alone, 560 births were registered by name. Very few of the newborns survived. Many were killed immediately after birth in front of their mothers. There are no definitive figures on the numbers of unborn children who were often cruelly and brutally aborted in late pregnancy. Every woman was forced to endure an unforeseeable period of deprivation and persecution from the moment they arrived in Ravensbrück. Their first confrontation with the regime of terror in the camp was horrifying and deeply shocking. Systematic dehumanization by the SS began on registration. They were forced to strip naked and wait hours for inspections by SS staff. They were jeered at and abused. 41-year-old Charlotte Muller from Berlin became known as prisoner number 10787 and had a red triangle. All the prisoners were assigned a category. 
Charlotte Muller was one of the thousands of so-called political prisoners because of her Communist Party membership and activities in the resistance. She was now branded by the red triangle she wore. Communists, social democrats or women from other opposition parties to the regime all received the red triangle and so did almost all foreigners. Thousands of them had actively fought with the resistance in their own countries against the German occupying forces. This included French women resistance fighters. Prisoner categories were often carried out indiscriminately. An error could mean an earlier death because these identifying tokens determined the status of the individuals within the prisoner hierarchy. Some categories survived longer. Jehovah's Witnesses were given purple triangles and had a unique status, for they were among the first inmates of the camps after their religion was outlawed by the Nazis in April 1933. They were admired for their commitment and were the only group of prisoners who theoretically were allowed to leave the concentration camps if they renounced their faith, although very few actually signed the so-called Jehovah's Witness Declaration. Other women stigmatized for a range of crimes were indiscriminately issued with black or green triangles. The so-called antisocial and unemployable were included in this group. There are virtually no surviving records for this category. Gypsies were branded with black triangles. They shared the lowest status in the camp hierarchy with the Jews as racially persecuted peoples. The SS were ordered to completely eliminate the European gypsy race. The Reich Center for the Control of Gypsies was set up in 1936 on the orders of Heinrich Himmler. Nazi bureaucracy at the center organized the internment of gypsy families and also initiated the program of biological research on racial purity. In the summer of 1939, the first 440 gypsy women arrived at Ravensbrück from the Bergenland region of Austria. They were arrested as a result of the laws governing arrest and detention, according to which all gypsies with no fixed abode were to be interned in camps. Several thousand gypsy women and children were deported to the Ravensbrück camp where medical experiments were conducted on them.